Hi, this is Todd Geis with Geis Interactive. Today, I'd like to talk about FileMaker transactions and uh, what they are and what they're good for. Um, so get at why. Let's get at that right off the bat. So FileMaker transactions protect your data when bad things happen. And uh, bad things do happen. Uh, if you want some more information on that, I've got um, some links up there you can visit. We'll have those links in the blog post, but I outline a whole bunch of reasons to, as to why some bad things can happen. But just to summarize, they can be anything from, uh, from, the, from the client crashing to the network going down to record locking to um, using, using WebDirect. All of these things can cause bad things to happen to your, uh, to your scripts. And that's really what we're talking about here is how do we get FileMaker scripts to uh, not screw up when something like that happens. Um, so the way we do that is uh, we batch all of the changes that we're making to the database in our FileMaker script into a single commit. And, and then we, we save that commit uh, and it either completely succeeds or completely fails. There's no in-between that's possible. You can't have a partially saved commit. Um, an entire commit goes through or it fails. The reason why this is a good thing is because both complete success or complete failure are known states. The in-between is unknown and difficult to guess or determine. It may be impossible to guess or determine. So you're better off with either a complete failure or a complete success. So um, FileMaker, the way that FileMaker does transactions is um, it's kind of a trick. Uh, and it basically works through related records. So related records are committed along with the parent record. So uh, it could be traditional parent-child relationship like invoices and invoice items. Uh, when you save changes to invoice items, I'm um, sorry, when you save changes to invoices, then the changes to invoice items are saved along with that in a single commit. But it may be any kind of arbitrary relationship too. The key thing to know is that if you have a window open and it has related records open as, long as, as well as the main record, then when you commit the, the main record, all of the related records are committed as well in a single commit. Uh, and uh, a nice little corollary to that is revert record will revert all of the changes to both the main or parent record and all of its related records as well. So those changes are batched up and saved in memory until a commit happens or until a revert record happens. And at that point, the data is either saved or it's reverted. Uh, whether or not if you call revert record, then it would be it would be reverted. So um, so how do we use FileMaker transactions to ensure that uh, the scripts that we want to run actually do what we we tell them to do, or completely fail and, and don't do any of what we tell them to do? The basic idea is we make all of our edits through relationships, um, and if no errors occur during those edits, those set fields, those new records, those delete records, um, then we commit the parent. If the commit succeeds, all the changes succeed. Uh, if there was an error, we revert the record and all the changes are discarded. So um, that's really, that's the key bit of information. If you know that, then, then you, can, you can build FileMaker transactions into your scripts. It's not that difficult. So let's take a look at the demo and I'll show uh, one of the demos we were working on earlier with another video and then we'll look at a little bit of the basics of, of how um, some of this stuff works. Okay, so um, in a previous video, we looked at this demo I'm going to show here, and we looked at, at uh, why we built things the way that we did in this demo, and also showed a little bit about how transactions work. If you haven't seen that video, I would encourage you to go check that out before coming back and watching this, um, uh, just to help, help get you set up and get the, get the scene set, if you will. Uh, but I'm going to recap really quickly as to what's going on here. So um, we showed in the previous video a slow inventory report that we were able to make much faster by essentially pushing this status field, the, the fact that this work order here is open, um, we pushed it out to all of the work order items and we stored it there. So now every work order item knows whether or not its work order is open or not and it doesn't have to go and look up through an unstored calculation to the work order. This is really critical for, for performance. Um, so, but the problem is, is that then that these two values have to stay in sync. All of these values and this value have to be in sync. And if they're not, 
then you've broken your inventory report. So you can't ever let like one of these say closed while this says open. So that's the problem that we're trying to solve here with this with this demo. So um, we have uh, I'm going to simulate a record lock, which is one of the most common errors or the most common problems that transactions can help you deal with, but it's not the only one. Um, and uh, we're going to simulate it by just having another window open to the same to this to the work order items table here. And I've got all of the work orders here that you see here just as their raw items. So um, that's open there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the third one by just adding a one to it. So now the third item is locked. So if I just click over here and leave that window as it is, that record is open and locked. So that means that this record is open, as I can edit it there, as you can see. Um, this record is open. But this record, the third one, is not. If I try to open it, I'm going to get that error. So the record is locked. So our script that deals with this, our script that does the um, that sends the data from the work order to the work order item, really needs to be able to handle that scenario. So let's see what happens if we try it using um, a non-transaction safe script. And that script is really just going to go and replace the records um, and the related work order items with. It's going to try to with status with the status from the parent, and uh, we'll see what happens. We get an error, as we expected, and we can see that one of those items remained open, and this one's closed. So now we have our problem. So that's a demonstration of the problem. Let me just uh, commit that record, um, and just uh, set this back to open. Get everything back to the way it was. Let's go back in and open this again, and now we'll run with our transaction safe script and we'll see the difference. So our record is open and locked. We open it and um, we're going to try to close this work order and we do. We get an error. It says 301. If I click OK, we notice that none of those changes went through. So that is really what we're talking about. That's the, the heart of the matter here is we're able to stop any, any changes from happening just because one of the records was open. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at that script in with Scripty Butter Rowan. So I'm going to call that script, and we'll step into it, and here we go. So uh, the script starts out fairly normally. We, we gather the status from the script parameter, uh, and we set it into the work order field. So the first thing we do is we set that to close, which we just did. And that worked. So um, our error got. Let me bring up the. Um, let me bring up this guy here. And we'll show our error is zero, so we know that worked. So if there wasn't an error there, we're going to exit right away. We can't, we, if the parent record is locked, if this first record is locked, we can't continue with the script. We're done, so we have to get out. But in this case, we go past and we continue on, and we're going to start looping through the portal row here, through the portals, through the rows in the portal. And uh, we're going to portal row first, and we set the field. And again, um, we don't see, we can see the last error down there and it's still zero, so that worked. So we continue on and we go to, um, we go to the next portal row and we try again and that one is working and we continue on. And now when we get to the third portal row, we, we should have a problem because that record is locked. So we hit it and yes, we see 301 errors, what shows up there. So now we exit the loop, we're out, because again, if we can edit the third record, there's no reason to try editing the rest. And now we have to deal with the fact that we have an error. And so um, we know we have an error at this point, so we don't, we don't even bother committing. We skip that, and we go right to here where we check the error again. We revert record. All of the changes have been undone. And we're going to show our little dialog here. Um, but that's it. So we saw there that by, by looping through the portal, and, and checking after each set field to see if there was an error. And if there was an error, we just simply reverted the entire thing. We're, we were able to protect against record locking. That's a great example. Um, but again, record locking is only one of the many, many issues that can stop your script from doing what you think it's going to do. OK, so in the script that we just looked at uh, in the previous section, um, we were just looping through the portal row, changing this this value here, the status in the in the work order items. So we were just editing related records. Now we know that uh, if, if we want to get more creative with transactions, we want to be able to 
not only edit, but create and delete records too. And if we know how to create, edit, and delete records, well then we can do just about whatever we want. So let's take a quick look at how um, we create records and we delete records through a relationship since we've already seen how to edit them. First of all, uh, most of you probably already know this, you you one, the easy way to do it is to have a portal set up with um, a relationship that is right here. This is what I want to show. Uh, that relationship set up with allow create allow creation of records in this table via this relationship. So when that's checked, then of course you get the little um, and on, set on a portal, you get a little blank row. And when you go to that record, you can start to type in it, or or a script could set a field through that through that relationship to that record, and you would create a new record. Um, and now I have edited the parent record or the master record, and I have created a new uh, child record here, new new related record. Uh, but since I am still in a transaction because I have not committed yet, I'm not running a script that's committed, and I haven't touched the background or done anything else that will cause a commit. I can revert the record, the master record, and all of the changes go away. So uh, that's the easy way to, or that's the most common way of creating a new record through a relationship, but you don't need a portal. There's another way you could do it, and we'll save that for a different video somewhere down the road, but you don't need a portal to create a, a uh, related record. You just need a relationship set up with that checkbox, um, as I showed a little bit earlier. So um, deleting records. Well, you can delete records through a portal too. In fact, any, any portal row that you're on can be deleted with a script step, delete, uh, delete portal row. So we can look at... Uh, Oh, we'll look at any old script here, um, and uh, there it is. We have that delete portal row script step can delete a portal row. But in this little demo here, I'm, a, I'm not using a script. We're doing everything by hand, but a script would behave the same way. Um, if we're in a portal row, in this case the first one, and I call delete record, FileMaker is going to give me this choice between master and related. And I will choose the related record and delete that. And it's going to ask me if I want to delete it. And I say yes, and now it's gone. But I have not committed the parent record, so or the master record. So if I revert record, it will come back. So again, that's showing again that we can delete any record in our portal just by essentially navigating to the portal row that we want to delete and calling uh, delete portal row uh, via script to make that happen. Now just to show how interesting this, this can get, um, you can actually do a combination of deletes, edits, and creation all in the same commit and you can revert the whole thing or commit the whole thing in a single shot. So let's take a look here. Let's, um, let's delete this record. So we'll delete the first one. And let me edit this one. And let me delete that one. And then let me create a new record. Then I'm going to edit the master record. And then what the heck, we'll create another related record. Now I still haven't, um, I still haven't committed the record because I haven't touched the background. So our revert record is still active. And if I revert record, all of the changes. Are going to be discarded. And if I committed the record, all of those changes will be committed in a single shot. So in this case, we have we've deleted two related records, we've edited the master record, we've edited a parent uh, one of the related records, and we've created two others. So we've done just about any, everything that you would ever need to do um, to, to to your records, and we can still revert that because it is still all done inside of a single batch. So we're back to where where we went. So um, you can pretty much do anything you want to your database through through relationships. I've shown some very simple stuff here, and sometimes you will need to get creative. Uh, but I've yet to find any kind of scenario, data processing scenario, that I couldn't turn into a transaction by using really the exact same techniques that I that I've shown you here today. All right. So we saw in the demo that uh, if you create, and edit, delete records through relationships, and you commit that record. Um, those records are all saved or none of them are. None of, the, none of the changes are. And if there was an error, you can revert records. And that is really the secret of, of, of FileMaker transactions. And it basically allows you to create, edit, and delete 
as many records as you want and any records that you want uh, in your uh, throughout your entire system and batch them into a single single commit or discard the changes if there was a problem. Uh, this is really really important uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, one of the things is uh, it makes hard things possible. So if you're doing applications that include things like inventory or accounting or syncing records, um, you are passing data around from table to ta table. Um, you're doing a lot of complex data manipulation that is updating many records and many tables across your system. And if you're not using FileMaker transactions to make sure that those, those things either completely succeed or completely fail, then um, it is only a matter of time before the data in your database uh, is just plain wrong. Um, bad things do happen. And there's no way to avoid the bad things happening, but you can use, but you can mitigate the damage and prevent the damage by using the industry standard database transactions that are built into FileMaker. Thanks very much.